Oh, Teresa's uh, Tikva's online, it looks like. Yeah, she's not yet in the United States. She what? She's not in the United States. She's not, not even in the States? I don't think so. Oh. All right, good morning and Shabbat Shalom. Um, I'm Rabbi Halfon. And um, before we start, I mean, we're starting, but I'm not going to put on my prayer shawl until Simon puts his on. Um, so we're just going to do a song to warm up. In the, in the Jewish tradition, we have a thing, it, and I have to say it carefully, N-I-T-U-N, nigun, or sometimes they say a nigun. A nigun is a, a melody with no words. It's sort of like Jewish scat, right? You know what I'm talking about. You're a musician? Yeah, okay. So so it's you know like in Tevye and Fiddle on the Roof, it's I Beatles, I Beatles, I so so they all have bim bomb, ya ya ya. It's very easy because you're praying to God without words. So I'll start with one like that. La 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 that's hard words, Chris. La 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 This one has a clap. going to assume they do know things okay so uh, shabbat shalom means um a peaceful shabbat or a sabbath of peace shalom as you all know means hello goodbye and peace but when you say shabbat shalom uh you're really saying may you be blessed with the peace of shabbat and so it's a very special day obviously um a couple of bookkeeping things um so everybody should have a little booklet which i did a lot of work on and uh, thanks to a guy who's not here, Ben Thornell, who's a substitute for our uh, regular uh, uh, office manager. I mean, he can't be here because he's a Boy Scout uh, counselor running around. But, you know, formatting this was hard enough. Thank you to uh, uh, Stuart and the family for this lovely picture of Simon. And it's been my tradition to do these booklets. That way you have a keepsake to take home with you. And also it uh, helps to follow even if you did grow up in a synagogue, what's happening now? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? Um, <clears throat> the booklet is just the outer cover. We didn't staple it, but I then added two songs, which we're going to do a little later. Uh, so that's the inside. It's not as if it's meant to be the, the booklet itself, but so you can separate it. If you want to just follow the, the service, you have this. And then when we come to the songs, you'll have that. Um, and uh, I'll explain a few things, but I've been told that in the past that Baron Bat says I, I talk too much, I explain too much. Um, the only thing I will say is that uh, this is, as some of you know already, we're a, a big building, a big synagogue, but a small membership now. And this is our only Bar Mitzvah the entire year. And Simon gets to have it. So uh, it's been an honor. Uh, incidentally, you can look at the website I came here in January, but I began coming in September, August, actually. Um, and I moved here in the middle of the winter from California. Um, rabbis and ministers, I know a few, are frustrated stand-up comedians. So I'll do a little bit of that, but I'll get serious later. Um, so the bar mitzvah or the bat mitzvah, it explains in the booklet, is a ceremony of wit in which a young person comes of age um, in this case, in Simon's case, he's already doing some of the things that they used to be expected to do, as in running the business, right? Working at the store. But in the old days, in Roman times, kids, kids, boys and girls would uh, be expected to do things, even getting married that, that young. 
Um, and it's important to, because a lot of people say, I, he got bar mitzvahed, or she got bas mitzvahed. It's like a verb. It is a condition. It be, a, a person becomes an adult or a, a symbolic adult. Uh, and traditionally, 13 for boys, 12 and a half for girls. And that meant that, you know, the age of puberty. Uh, today, it's more of a ceremony of beginning the journey to adulthood. And you'll hear how Simon talks. He already talks like an adult, analyzes like an adult. So I look forward to seeing this, this guy when he's older, uh, when he comes back here to visit as, as Professor uh, Wolf or, or Dr. Wolf or uh, Attorney Wolf. Um, in any event, read the first paragraphs of the booklet. It explains another mystical thing that I love to point out is that it's considered at this age that your higher soul comes into your body that at this point in a young person's life, they're responsible, right, for their own mistakes. You break that window, you've got to pay for it. A um, couple of other things, I, you've already done it. Kipot, or the yarmulke, as it's sometimes called, are optional here, but a lot of people do put them on. Men are used to it. Many women do as well, and in our community and elsewhere. The talit, the prayer shawl, however, is a symbol of, like, if I were to put on a cross, it's the commandment of Judaism. So sometimes people say, oh, can I wear one? A lot of people will say, I'm going to become Jewish. I will be Jewish. You know, I'm converting. I'd like to wear one. And I would not say, no, you can't. But uh, as you'll see in a few moments, it's a symbol, again, of a Jewish adulthood. Now, the thing that's so cool is that they have all kinds of different styles nowadays. Mine is rainbow, Jason's rainbow. And you'll see Simon's in a few minutes. Let's see, the rest. Um, I might as well do all this now, so I'll talk less later. Um, the uh, highlight of a Shabbat morning service is, of course, the Torah reading. The Torah is uh, there. Are, how many we got? Seven in there? There's just so many different, but it, each one is exactly the same. It's the five books of Moses. When I had a congregation in Massachusetts, uh, I used to bring, the, you know, have the Catholic kids and the Protestant students. I'd bring them up here on the, this is called the Bema. And I would open it up and say, this is your Bible, the five books of Moses. Um, there are 54 Torah portions in the year. So what we do is every week, we devote the whole week to the reading of one Torah portion. It might be seven chapters, and it's about four of uh, the Genesis story, Adam and Eve, and the, uh, the ex leaving the garden, and Noah, the next one. So we're in the last book of the Torah, Devarim or Deuteronomy. And as you'll see, Simon's uh, Torah portion is a very important one. So it's called a Parsha. Some people might call it a Porsche, but I prefer a Prius myself. Um, but I'm All right, that was so much for a bad dad joke. Um, uh, sometimes they call it a Sidra. So those that portion. And then it compared with the book of the Torah, similar to Catholic tradition in some ways, is a book of the prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos. Uh, we don't always read the books of the writings, the third book section of the, the, the Hebrew Bible, except certain holidays. Not every book is read, but certain holidays. So every Shabbat morning, we have the Torah and then the Haftarah, which is the books of the prophets. And that's the big deal for a kid to read directly from the Bible, from the record of the Torah, and then to um, read some, a chant from the Haftarah. Uh, another fun thing about synagogues, I'm sure most of you know, is we sing a lot. It's like opera. We sing all the time. And it's a big deal, especially for a young person. And you'll hear, where did he go, by the way? He snuck out. He, oh, he's up there. Okay. <laughs> he's already in his seat of honor. I'm looking down here. He's already where he's supposed to be. In any event, um, and there are various players as well, people in the, in the opera. Um, one of them just came in. Noam is our uh, Torah reader today. Jeff, who's been running around, is our chair of our ritual committee. Jeff's right there. And Jeff is going to conduct the Torah service. And you'll see the rest. So uh, very briefly, in the booklet, Bima, Aron Kodesh, or Holy Ark. Above that, the Ner Tamid, the, the holy symbol of God's presence. Um, and we have a very special uh, little addition today. When we read the Torah, we don't touch it with our fingers. We point at it with a little pointer, 
usually made of metal or something. So there's a woman that lives in Laramie, one of our members, Sherry Means, does lovely carvings of uh, mezuzot, uh, the amulets for the doors She's in the gift shop. And she does spoons and all kinds of things out of wood. So she carved a special yad, the pointer for the Torah. And today we're initiating that. And I put it on this Torah and maybe we can use it for the next bar mitzvah. Um, the rest is explained in the booklet. So Rabbi, stop talking. Um, oh, one more other thing. When we take out the Torah, she's paraded around like a queen. Um, and it's quite a, you know, sort of the power of that moment. And we rise when the ark is open. There's a couple of other prayers we rise. It's not like, as I said, if I went to church, well, when do I bow? Do I not bow? Do I not kneel? There's nothing wrong with bowing, you know, a little like this. And there's nothing wrong if you feel motivated to, when we carry the Torah back and forth, actually Simon will be carrying it. If you want to, you can take a book or your talit or something else and touch the scroll. Um, and it's honor, you know, holy book. Um, but uh, we don't touch it with our hands. Some people, I know very pious people who actually kiss the Torah, you know. So without any further ado, let's begin. Uh, the prayer book is in front of you and it's called Mishkan Tefillah, it opens from right to left. Um, and the other book that, that we will uh, have, but not a lot of copies of, is the five books of Moses in commentary form. And they're in the back. We'll bring them out. You can get it now, Jason, if you want, but we were gonna, I was gonna wait till the Torah service. We don't have enough for everybody to, to look on and follow in the Torah service if you wanted to. All right, so we are doing service number two, service number two in this prayer book, which begins on page 170. May my life be one link in the chain of goodness. As I say, the prayers of my ancestors help me to recall their devotion and faithfulness, their joy and suffering, which are in every word. Holiness is my heritage. May I be worthy of it. May our tradition live in me and pass from me to generations I shall never know, enriched by the truth that I have found and the good deeds I have done. So may I fulfill my task on earth and receive my blessing. And when the service ends and the prayers have ceased, help me to bring their spirit into the world in which I live. And I love God above all and my neighbor as myself and be a living witness to the truth that never changes. Um, so, um, let's see, uh, back, yes, back to the next page, 172. Please join me if you wish to. Uh, this is uh, was a few weeks ago in the Torah, in the book of Numbers, we read the strange story, Numbers 24, of how a uh, king, Balak, in Moab, was annoyed that the uh, Israelites were going through his land, and he sent a prophet or a seer named Balaam to curse them. And then, no matter what Balaam did, it kept coming out as a blessing. So we borrowed that those words, and we say, how good it is, how fair are your tents of Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel. Ma tovu halecha Yaakov, mishkenotecha Yisrael, v'anihi berov kastecha, ahavo vetecha. Adonai, I love your temple abode, the dwelling place of your glory. I will humbly bow low before Adonai, my maker. As for me, may my prayer come to you, Adonai, at a favorable moment. O God, in your abundant faithfulness, Answer me with your sure deliverance. So before we go any further, uh, we're gonna call up um, Stuart and the family to give Simon his first prayer shawl, his first talit, and just see it in the picture as well. And that's why I waited. But if you already have put it on, that's okay. We turn to page 171 for that ceremony. But uh, you take page 62. Are you going to say one thing? No. Okay. All right. Who were they? Okay. And um, Ben, you can come up here too. It's part of the family thing. 
passing on the tradition. We'll have a couple of moments like this where they're just private family time. See if you guys can move just a little this way so you can be on the camera too. All right. We put our hands on Lord in place so for us. We held high our parents and children and taught by one generation to the next. Whatever has befallen us, our people have remained steadfast in one of people the Torah. So it was carried in the arms of parents and their children might not be deprived of their birthright. And now we pray that you, Simon, may always be worthy of this inheritance. Take it after you. May we be faithful Jew, searching for wisdom and truth, working for justice and peace. May the one who has always been our God, our guide, inspire you to bring honor to the family and to the house of Israel. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kedishanu Bumit Shotah, Betibanu, Lihitatev, Tzitzi. Amen. You watch some people do what I'm doing. They put it over their head, like I've been wrapped in God's blankie. For that moment. I'm jealous. I like that talit. That's beautiful. Um, and more on the talit, it's explained in the booklet. Um, in, in the old days, people were used to wear like a poncho or a sarape, um, and it had four corners. So the Torah tells us, uh, New, Numbers 15, 37 says, uh, you shall put on the corner of each uh, of the garment a fringe of blue. We no longer have the blue, but instead we have these knots, and the knots symbolize God's name is one. So there's four of them the four corners of the world. So a prayer shawl or a talit is worn in prayer. Uh, very pious Jews, Orthodox Jews wear them even as an undergarment, like a t-shirt. Okay, so we continue page 174. These are all preliminary prayers that go to kind of open the service. It should be, it should be six in the morning, right? We're just waking up. And we, we wake up from our sleep and we say, oh God, thank you for returning my soul that I borrowed uh, to me. The soul that you have given me, oh God, is pure. You created and formed it, breathed it into me, and within me you sustain it. So long as I have breath, therefore, I will give thanks to you, my God and God of all ages, source of all being, loving guide, oh sorry, my God, God of all ages, source of well-being, loving guide of every human spirit. Um, so um, the soul is pure, even though we have an outside layer, our inner soul is always pure. Elohai nishama shenatata bi tehorahi. Elohai nishama shenatata bi tehorahi. On page 176, and uh, that is at home, if you're looking at the, the computer version 294. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, 175, starting 175. These are morning blessings. And all you need to do is say amen as I chant each one. I'll do some in English as well. They're blessings of waking up, thanking God for our bodies, for our freedom, uh, for our souls, and for learning. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Ashenat Anasech Vivina Lafin Ben Yomu Ben Laila Yafe Amen Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Who opens the eyes of the blind Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Matir Asurim Who frees the captive Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Zokef Kefufim Amen. Next page. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, who stretches the earth over the waters. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaMechi Mitzad Dekaver. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Malbi Sharumim, who clothes the naked. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, HaNoten Noayef Koach. Give strength to the weary. On the top of page 177, 
Blessed are you, God, source of all life, who removes sleep from my eyes, slumber from my eyelids. Amen. Amen. Thank you for making me in your image. Amen. Thank you for making us free. Amen. And I would translate that as follows. Thank you for making me a person who wrestles with God. And um, so now I'd like everybody to join it with us um, in a little uh, song of blessing, page 182. Um, we are grateful for uh, Torah, for learning. And 182 is 300 in the uh, online version. This is a, a traditional prayer of thanking God for the teachers, for the students, for the rabbis, for the learning. And this is a version by, in English by Debbie Friedman. For our teachers and their students and the students of the students, we ask some of the more traditional uh, stuff and some not so traditional stuff. But um, before I came here, Simon had the uh, honor of studying with our previous rabbi who uh, died tragically in 2020, Rabbi Moldo, and also I guess another teacher. And he, he, I came here and he already mastered a lot of Hebrew, knew the prayers. So the next prayer is one that I don't expect most of you to follow, but our, our stalwarts will. It's on page 185. And it's Psalm 145. So you can follow the English. You may recognize it. Um, happy are they who dwell in your house, right? Um, you forever praise you. Uh, the Ashray, as it's called, is alphabetical, not in English, but in Hebrew, where each verse begins Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalid, Hey, you know, A, B, C, D. So it's sort of like the, the Jewish version of what's that song? A is how I da 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 adore you. B is what so. It's thanking God for all of the blessings that we have in our lives, A through Z. Now, also, we also have difficult times. And so you might ask, well, how can we say uh, you open your hand with favor and everybody has plenty to eat? We know there's pe people who don't. We pray that that will be the case. By saying the prayer, we make it so. So uh, Simon is going to now lead us in Hebrew, page 185 and following in that prayer, and uh, we respond, it's every other line, he sings a line, we sing a line, so I'm counting on you and you and Gail to sing it loudly. All right, take it away, Simon. 105, 303 at home. Ashrei <laughs> Yoshrei Ashrei 
Next page. Now, we, we might be tempted to applaud, but you can't. Uh, just say, Yasha Koach. Yasha Koach means well done. It's a Yiddish expression. Like, good job. We now continue, or we, we, we're finishing this section of the service, of the preliminary service on page 194 with uh, something called the Katsi Kaddish or half Kaddish. Kaddish is a word that means holiness. Um, so you may be familiar with the word, the blessing on the wine is called the Kiddush. Kiddush, a blessing, a wedding ceremony is called the Kiddushin. And uh, at, uh, we say this prayer also at uh, graveside or at the end of the service. So Kaddish is a, is a word, holiness, and it is in Aramaic, not Hebrew, which was a language spoken in the north, in the Galilee. And it became, for the Christian tradition, it became the Lord's Prayer, right? It is actually very similar. And that's why Matthew 6, 18, I think I got that right. Uh, they code Jesus and say, what should we say? What do we know? We don't know any prayers. What do you know by heart? That one. Oh, okay, so do that one. So it, it is uh, very ancient page 194, but we sing it in this way. And after that, I may as well do all these remarks. So we, uh, you'll see in the book that we rise after that for the barahu, which is like the going through the door of gratitude. We say, thank you. And this is the main service. Then we have um, the highlight of that section is the Shema Yisrael, the hero Israel on page 200, which Simon is going to chant, and you'll hear it later because it's in this week's Torah portion. Then we have a prayer of thanksgiving, of uh, redemption, reminding us of the crossing of the Red Sea. So we have these themes that always continue in our services of thanking God for creation, for Torah, and for redemption. Anyway, back to 194, that's 312 at home. The Almighty Barachi Rute, the Amnif Mahute, the Chayehom, the Yomehom, the Chayehom, the Israel, the Agala, the Agala, the Vizman Kari Vimeru. Together, Yeheshme, Rabba Mavara, the Allah Mulal Me Almaya, it var. It var a fish tabach, we far of it from a bit nasse, we hit a da, we hit a le, we hit a lal, she made the kudisha, the ripu, le lamin kobirkata, the shirata, tush birkata, the net, and don't yet, don't rise yet, the miron de alma, the miru, amen. Jump with me to page 196 and let's read together, together. 
just to get us in the mood for this uh, thank you for this gratitude. Together, the world is sunlight, restoring the soul, rejoicing the heart, bringing light to the eyes, more welcome than gold, a Torah from heaven. I have no light to give the morning. My Torah, my special human gift is words. As I bring my words forth from silence, welcome them, you who redeems the sun from darkness. And I'll do the Hebrew, Baruch Atah Adonai Yotzer HaMe'orot. So um, take a moment, if you want, as you're standing, to be grateful for whatever it is you want to be grateful for, for life, for liberty, for your breath, for your families. And we rise. Page 195. <laughs> synagogue in uh, California was very formal reform, but very formal, you know, the rabbi would say, you may be seated, you please rise, you know, so I'll try not to do that, but if I do, I will say it only in basso profundo, very low. We continue on page 198, and uh, this is a very special week, uh, not only because of uh, Simon's Bar Mitzvah, last week in synagogues all over the world, we not everybody was crying, but we mourned the traditional uh, holiday or, or day of the destruction of the temple and the wiping out of, of Israel. And it's called the ninth of Av, the month, the Hebrew month of Av. And then a little known holiday, I spoke about it last night, that was observed in the second temple period has been rejuvenated. It's called the 15th of Av, the fifth of the new moon. How many, uh, full, full moon, excuse me. How many of us saw the full moon? It's a monster, monster moon. This, it was like three or four of them this year. And so Tuba Av, the, the 15th of Av, has been a traditional day that was kind of like in the second temple when all the girls would get uh, their beautiful dresses or they'd borrow from someone so that nobody was poor, they would borrow from someone else. They would go out into the grape fields and sing. And it was a, a Jewish Valentine's Day. And the boys at that time were told, you know, go and look for your bride to be. But some people say the women would choose the guys. Um, and uh, this was also done at Yom Kippur, believe it or not. So those two days were the most joyous days on the Jewish calendar until the temple was wiped out. So, but the reason I mention this is that it's been rejuvenated and the key word is love, right? All you need is love, uh, the, the uh, summer of love, all the words that you think of with love. So on page 198, and uh, we'll do a little bit in English um, on page uh, 199 as well. Oh God, you loved us with an unconditional love and through that love you've given us Torah as a guide for our wisdom and for our children. Why don't we read together 199, every other paragraph responsibly. Oh God, inspiration and guide for all, you have spoken a thousand tongues for us to hear. In every land and in every age, your children have heard you and imagine you in separate ways. And yet, O oh God, you are one unifier of humanity. Together, we give thanks for, for the sages, sages and teachers who bring us understanding of your will 
Gratefully, we recall lawgivers and prophets, the psalmists and the sages of Israel, and joyfully remember that from the dawn of Israel's life, we would turn to you and find purpose. May the teachings of, your, of our ancestors live on in our minds and their passion for righteousness in our, stir our hearts. Help us so to live that our daily conduct reveals the beauty and wisdom of your truth. So we're going to pick up at the bottom of page 198 in this song made famous uh, by uh, Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach. It says, open our eyes to your Torah and bring us together, unify all of us in the world to come together. And then after that, Simon is going to lead us in the, the uh, affirmation, the Shema. This is also easy, you can just go ay 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 ay. And bring us in peace from the four corners of our exile to our holy places. Free all the peoples suffering from troubles and bring us together to unify your name. So you'll see that I'm taking the four fringes, and some of us are doing this, as is Simon, the four um, little, little uh, uh, yarns, bring them together. Four of them symbolize the past, the present, the future, right? And then winding them around, uh, usually the right finger, some people do the left finger, for the Shema on page 200. Yeah, I know it's yeah. a... <laughs> Better get used to it because you'll be doing it for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. You got a talit now. Yeah. Shema Yisrael Adonai We continue across the page. Yep. Now, you can read the English, and we're going to have it, as I said, in our Torah today, but we continue on page 202 uh, in the morning service with this additional paragraph um, from numbers about the tzitzit. It's traditional to touch and kiss these little fringes as we say these words. Mm -hmm. 
So you can read the English there. Uh, well, I won't read it all together, but the essence of it is that these little funny fringe, we're a fringe group. <laughs> these, these fringes are to remind us of the commandments um, and that we're holy to God. Um, and uh, turns out when I did some more research in ancient days, everybody had different kinds of fringes. Oh, he's a member of that group. Oh, he's a member of that group. So um, it's a really cool thing. It's, it's Jewish macrame. You see, that's where the knots, and then there actually are, uh, one, one thread is longer than the others. It's wound around to symbolize six times, seven times, 11, 13, when it adds up, as I said, it's good hey vav hey, God's name is one. Um, so it ends, it's that thing that says, that you may remember to do all my mitzvot and be consecrated to your God, I am Adonai, who brought you out of the land of narrowness, the place, the Mitzrayim, the Egypt, to be your God. So it links us to the next prayer on page 204, Michamocha. Now, this is the prayer or the, the song, or part of the song that they sang when they were crossing over the Sea of Reeds. And um, I always like to tell the story that there was, uh, there was Moses with his staff saying, Psh, waters part and waters didn't part. And he kept on doing it. And then he said some more words. The waters wouldn't part. And one guy named Nachshon says, I'm not going to sit around and wait for any miracle. I'm going to walk into the water. And everybody followed him. Another tradition is that the women led with Miriam and the women led singing the song. And so it's a song about redemption. It's a redemption song, as Bob Marley would have it. It's a song about freedom. But it's also a song about not being afraid to go through a transition. So at an event like this, I like to think to myself, you know, wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to say a kid? No, you got, you got a kid, age, I'm getting older, you know? So every time you go through a door, you know, or a new event in your life, going to college, getting a new job, moving to a new state, you know, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Faith, have faith, walk into the water and the waters will part. And you'll never know what you might find on the other side. Here we go, 204. <laughs> A new song the people sang to you at the shores of the sea. Together they proclaimed and sang to your name, Adonai Loch Leolam Boed. And we rise at the bottom of the page, getting ready for the Amidah, the silent prayer. If you need some more explanations in the booklet, the silent prayer is that took the place of sacrifices in the temple once the temple was gone. And uh, so we say these words, rock of Israel, rise uh, in support of Israel and redeem us as you promise. Our Redeemer, Adonai, so the oath is your name. Blessed are you, Adonai, for redeeming us. Baruch atah Adonai, ka'al Yisrael. And Simon's going to join me up here. 
And uh, you may have noticed that there are certain periods where we turn towards the ark. God doesn't live in there, um, but we turn symbolically to be in touch with the spirit. So what we'll do is we're going to chant the first couple of paragraphs together um, in Hebrew, but then you're free to go through any prayer in that section up to page 219, or to just take a moment yourself to do whatever you want, even take a walk, maybe not outside, but it's a time when we're each standing on our own private mountain, talking to a God of understanding or just meditating. Here we go. As I said, beginning of page 205, and at home it's on page 323. Adonai, open up my lips, that my mouth may declare the your way. Next page. 
on page 219, which is 337 at home. Many of our prayers end with these words. Oh, sorry. Oh boy, everything's, there we go. Um, May the one who is peace or makes peace in the highest places bring peace to us and let us say amen. So it's the bottom of 219. Occupational hazards, so policies and mics and everything else. But I got it. And I could do it without the guitar, but I'm vain. I love the guitar. Osesh, try it with me. Osesh shalom bim romav, hu yaase shalom alenu ve al kol Yisrael ve imru. Amen. Oh, Seb, Shalom, Bim Romal, Ulya Asek, Shalom Aleinu, Ve Al Koho Yisrael, Ve Himru, Himru, Ham. Here's the easy part. Ya Asek, Shalom, Ya Asek, Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Yaakov Yisrael, Yaase Shalom, Yaase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu. Yaakov Yisrael, 
As I said, begins the, the Torah service. Um, uh, Jeff is going to come up and guide us through that. We'll have various people have honors. And as I said, that's in the booklet. Each person is called up by their Hebrew name, if we know it. Um, also, it's customary while the Torah is on the table, we do a blessing for health for all the people in the congregation. So if you know of somebody who's sick in body, spirit, or mind, you know, give us their name or just Raise your hand and we'll call on you. Uh, another tradition, this, this goes all the way back, as I was saying, to the time when uh, the temple stood in Jerusalem. All right, here's another rabbi joke. Uh, Chaim, what are you doing on Shabbat? I'm going to go to the temple in Jerusalem, the big, big, the big building. And, uh, you know, what do you get to do there? Well, we, we watch the Kohanim, the priests, do an off sacrifice, and the Levites sing some songs. And uh, it's very, you know, moving, very much. So we sit way, way up there and in the highest seats. Um, and so what do you get to do? We watch. Well, what, Shlomo, what are you doing on Shabbat? Well, I'm going to Rabbi Hillel's house. And Rabbi Hillel, what do you do there? Well, we study, we debate, we discuss, we pray. And then every once in a while, there's a kid who's 13 and that kid gets to come and do and try their part. So that house turned into the synagogue. And if you know something about church history, same thing happened for the churches, right? The people would meet at people's homes. Eventually it got too big for the homes or they go to a, big, a person with a bigger home, a bigger home until they had to build synagogues and churches. So when the temple was destroyed by the Romans, as I said in 66 or actually 70 of the common era, that was the end of that kind of Judaism. Um, but in its place, we put Torah study. So as I said, the Torah, is um, a big part of this. And incidentally, uh, Torah is read on Monday and Thursday. Traditionally, a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah can be done on that day. Doesn't have to be done on Shabbat. It can be done you know, out in the woods. It can be done in the setting with everybody there. If you look online, you'll see uh, sometimes they broadcast these at the, the wall in Jerusalem. By the way, Abby, Abby, when we pass out the candy, Abby gets to be one of the candy passers. Okay, cool. All right, so we go to page 244, the back of the book, that section. And Jeff is over here. Okay. Um, and I'm going to uh, call up, uh, is everybody here for all y'all? We may have to juggle. Okay, well, it's up. Jeff, as I said before, is our ritual chair, and uh, this is a special. A title called Gabai, not goodbye, Gabai. The Gabai runs the service. Uh, they can usually run the whole service and they're going to do the, uh, the Torah service. So take it away, Jeff. I'm going to go sit down. Call out the people. You have a mic? Oh, Give okay. him. Oh, you yeah. that way. I I oh, please rise as the ark is open. Give him your mic. Give him your microphone. I Oh, may I make one other announcement? This is the pointer. I always said it earlier. This is the pointer I spoke about by sharing these. It's not pointing the right way. It's, it's, I gotta give it a shorter cord. So it's what it just says, thanks. Go to, yeah, go to one of the lights. Here, walk there. Go right here. That way you can hear your own Page 244. And come on, go him at all noise, then come on, say, ha, mouth to ha, mouth to call on him, whom him shout to ha, the call door by door. I don't know, I'm Allah, I don't know, I'm Allah, 
Aronoi imboch leolam ba ed. Aronoi oz leamo yitain. Aronoi varech et amo ba shalom. Avarahami ejibog lezon ha ezion. Kime hamot yerushalayim. And now, um, if the whole family will come up, the whole Mishpoka, I uh, found you can do it this year too. The custom is um, kind of prevalent these days to take this moment while the Torah is taken out to literally pass the Torah from family to from generation to generation. Um, and uh, so it's the heavy burden that Simon gets to uh, to carry at this point. Um, you uh, just stay just stay where you are. I was going to say you could turn to the page. There. Okay. Our hearts are one on the very day when you admit yourself to a you commit yourself to a life of prayer. A life of prayer. We pray that we live with wisdom and caring in our actions. We pray that we grow each day in compassion for the need. We concern for the stranger and not for all of us. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and Rebecca, and Bless you on your dependent upon us all. May you grow in strength and courage for your good and sense of you. And may you always be served of all that. And so I have to say, this is not just that Torah, the five books of one. This is your Torah. This is Marv, uh, uh, Stuart's father, and the father of husband, and uh, Ben and Simon's grandfather, who passed away last year. His wisdom, the wisdom of all the, all the the ancestors, and also the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, and it's now yours to pass on to your next generation. Now, Ben is over here, even though he's younger than dad, because we want to have that. No, no, that's where it should go. So it should be passed from father to son. Okay, so we put it, you know, we put it on his shoulder just for a second, just like that. Just, you know, then he lives, you know, you don't have to have to carry it. But then Ben, Ben could actually take it. And then they have to sit together. And now we're back on in the prayer book where we were. Page 248. 248. <laughs> And we answer.
You may be seated when the tour is on the table. Okay, where you play stop. Be seated. Woo! Boy. Um, again, a bookkeeping thing. If you need water, go ahead and get some water in the social hall. Uh, take care of yourself. It's a little warm in here. We're uh, we're gonna work on that. So if you look at the booklet now, it lists the personnel for this part of the service. And um, we're very blessed in this congregation. I, I can chant in Torah correctly. Torah is written in Hebrew letters with no vowels, no periods, no consonants, and you just learn it and learn how to chant. And that's what Simon did and learned how to do. It's a special melody that's kind of very ancient. It sounds a little bit like Gregorian chant. Um, Noam is up here. Noam is from Israel. And there's various um, styles of chanting the Torah. Noah's going to chant. Noam's going to chant in the tradition of the Sephardic Jews, which will sound a little Arabic to some of you. Very cool. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's just up to you. In the back of the room, uh, Noah, this Noam, Noah, would you like to hand out some of the Humashim in the back? Okay, so you can share and I'll call out the page. It's this red book uh, called, yes. We don't have enough of eight time, so it, it, oh. it's, some of them are gonna be the hurts. Okay, I'll just call out the, the paragraph and the song. But in any event, it's from Deuteronomy, it's in the booklet. It's from uh, a section of Deuteronomy. They're all spelled out, uh, chapter five. So another thing is, as I mentioned earlier, that they're set up as a parsha, a section of the Torah. It's a tradition nowadays in many synagogues to not read the whole Torah portion. You'd be here for till, till one o'clock. Um, so we read it triennial, meaning a third, a third, a third. So the third that we're in is the middle third, which in this case is the most exciting third. It includes, as I said before, the hero Israel. It includes the Ten Commandments, and then it includes a section that Simon's going to chant. Um, so one more time, uh, Gabai, that's the manager, stage manager. Um, Noam is called the Baal Kore, the Torah reader, and I'm just the schlepper. I just work here. Um, if you want to follow, as I said, it's Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 1, which in this red book, I can't speak for the other one, Uh, in the red book begins on page one zero one zero one five ten fifteen. Uh, another thing that uh, you'll hear that uh, I'll talk about a little bit later, but the um, reading from prophets that Simon's going to read comes from Isaiah, and that's also found in the book. All right. Without any further ado, Jeff, I hand it over to you. So a little bit on the Torah that we'll Oh, today. yeah, go ahead, yes. Um, it's the oldest Torah that the congregation had, and it's the Eidelman Torah. It's got a date on it at 1886. So this Torah was brought to Wyoming before Wyoming was even a state. And it was probably the very first Torah ever read in, in Wyoming, the territory one. So we're honored to be using that this morning. So our first, I will know I'm sorry that everybody can't come up and see from here, but uh, oh, but perhaps sometime you go to a synagogue and say, oh, I'd like to see your Torah up close.
So she takes the corner of her tummy, touches the verse where we're chanting from. By the way, in the old days, everybody could chant this. Nowadays, most of us dance. So somebody read it. I did it. I gave the page a chance. And said to them, Hear, O Israel, the laws and rules that I proclaim to you this day. Study them and observe them faithfully. Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb, which is the same as Mount Sinai. It is not with our fathers that alone that God made this covenant, but with us, the living, every one of us who is here today. Face to face, Adonai spoke to you on the mountain and out of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to convey Adonai's words to you, for you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain as follows. And then the next Aliyah. I should note that you know this whole Torah portion is as if Moses is uh, an older man, uh, knows that he's got days on the earth are numbered, and he's repeating the stories from the old days. But he adds that you know sagely advice, you know, keep the covenant. And now here on this next uh, uh, section from six on, verse six on, we have his repetition of the so-called 10 commandments or 10 sayings. Um, there's a few minor differences in the way he says them from the version in Exodus 20. Um, so this is, uh, this is the hardcore stuff here. All right, so um, beginning, uh, if you're looking in this book, it's 1016, uh, chapter five, verse six. And somebody want to call out the Hertz? If anybody else has that one. Okay. All right. So six one. Oh, oh, he called me up. Around on me. Yeah. Okay. The order has changed. Okay. Um, no, he had the had the shot. Yeah, where we start.
Um, translation, you can find it, but and you probably know it well. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods beside me. You shall not make for yourselves a sculptured image, any likeness of what is in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters below the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Adonai, your God, and an impassioned God, visiting the guilt of the parents upon the children, upon the third and upon the fourth generations of those that reject me, but showing kindness to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. And then you recognize this one as well. You shall not fear, swear falsely by the name of Adonai, your God, for the Lord will not clear it, one who swears falsely by his name. So that was one, two, and three. Now we're on the, uh, the commandment number four, um, which is on uh, 1019 of this red book, um, verse 12. That's five, chapter five, verse 12. And now I'm going to call Jephthah. Ya'amod. Am I supposed to be able to read that? Mendel Barley. Oh, men, Mehir? Mendel. Mendel. Oh, I'm looking at the bottom here. Okay. Ba'amod Mendel Bar Linzer Aliyah Shlishit. I'm looking at Mary's. Baruch Ashabat le kadsho Kashir tzivcha Adonai loecha Sheshet yamim Tavod 
ועשית כל מלאכתך ביום השביעי שבת לאדוני אלוהיך לא תעשה כל מלאכה אתה ובנך ובתך ועבדך ואמתך ושורך וחמוריך וכל בהמתך וגרך אשר בשעריך למען ינוח עבדך ואמתך כמוך וזכרת כי עבד היית בארץ מצרים ויוציאך אדוני אלוהיך משם ביד חזקה ובזרוע נטויה על כן סביבך אדוני אלוהיך לעשות את יום השבת ברוך התור אלוהי אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחי עולם ותא בתוכנו ברוך התור אלוהי נותן התורה אמן That was all of all of number four translation observe the Sabbath day keep it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you six days shall you labor and do all your work But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your ox or your ass, or any of your cattle, your computers, your cars, or the stranger in your settlements. Turn off the news so that your male and female slave may rest as you do. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God freed you from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, Adonai, your God, has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. As I mentioned, on a tradition at this point to say a blessing of health uh, for well-being for anybody, we like in our congregation to mention not only our own loved ones, but also the caregivers, the doctors. We have several in our congregation, um, the nurses, uh, people around the world. Um, so feel free to say a name. If you don't say it out loud, say it in your heart or remember it when you go home. So on our list uh, for... Help with healing, we have Cheryl Adler, Mavan, Rafaela Bat, Sarah Amenu, Jason Bloomberg, Margo Brown, Patty Burgess, Ed Clark, Eliava Bat, Sarah, Jude, Ashley Cloud, Cheryl Cohen, Amy Davis, David Shlomo Ben Chaya Yaakoved, Sue Dyer, Dorothy Feldman, Lila Galinsky, Joe and Priscilla Golden, Rivka Chaya Bat, Hana Rivka, Hana Rivka Bat, Sarah, Lynn Grimm, Arlene Cohen Harris, Leslie Kay, Babs Klein, Yaakov Ben Menachem, Roger and Patricia McDaniel, Martin Moskowitz, Toma Nesbitt, Inat Batnitsa, Donna Pepper, Danell Phillips, Kelly Priest, Melissa Rayer, Susie Ribnick, Carmen Ridnauer, Michael Shea, Ava Smith, Tim Solon, Malka Bad Esther, Stephanie Sterling, Joe Thomas, Patrick Van, Agnes Weinstein, Jackie Sundheim McCarthy, Ben Bavra, Jonathan Seville, Andrea Moldo, and Morris Gardner. Are there any other names people would like to add at this time? Or at home. Salman Rushdie. No. On um, page, you'll call out the... You 253? Have it. 253, or at home, it's three... Uh, 71. 371 for those following at home. This is a song also written by that same uh, singer song writer I mentioned earlier, Debbie Friedman. And it's in the prayer book, so you're welcome to join in. <laughs> May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Bless those in need of healing, 
with Mufuash Lema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. The next Aliyah, that's the, the honor of reading the Torah, is our actual Torah reader, Noam. Um, who not only is a member of the synagogue and, and uh, helps out on all these things, but also very good friends of the Wolf family. Keeps, keeps uh, one of their kids gainfully employed, I might add. Um, so where we are is Deuteronomy, uh, they, they mixed it up with me. It's not, no longer what's on the booklet here. It's um, chapter five. Kavid, Kavid, Shamu. Uh, yes, honor your father and your mother. It is, um, yeah, uh, 516, chapter 5, verse 16, honor your father and your mother, which is found in the, uh, I'll call out this one. In this one, it's on page 767. Uh, you're calling them up? You got to call them up. Amen. Amen. Um, Noam is chanting, as I said, in a special uh, a melody that's uh, among the Sephardic Jews, but also he told me he, the reason those, those words were so long, some of them, is he's chanting in what's called a higher trope. It's like a festive trope it's reserved for the Ten Commandments. Let's read on uh, that uh, verse 16. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may long endure, that you may fare well in the land which Adonai your God is assigning to you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Nor you shall not crave your neighbor's house or his field or his male or female slave or his ox or his ass or his computer or his swimming pool or his backyard or his car or anything else that is your neighbor's. Um, apropos of uh, commandment number uh, six, honor your parents. There's an old story in the Talmud of a you know, kid answers the door or whatever they had back then. And it's a Roman magistrate, you know, he says, I want to see your father. And a kid says, uh, you can't, you can't. What are you being so rude to me for? You can't, uh, come back later. So the kid, guy comes back half an hour later, now with more guards, he says, I want to see your father. And he says, okay, come on in, kid. He said, what was the problem last time? He was taking a nap, right? So honor your parents can be many things. 
It doesn't mean just, you know, you say, mom, yes, dad, yes, mom. But he was honoring his face as I can't disturb my father during his nap. So um, we continue. Um, and uh, I'm, are we in order now? What was this? Who's the next? Is, is dad, right? No. Oh, we got Richard? No. No? OK. We got a substitute. We got a sub. Oh, this is the substitute. This is. Uh, uh, Gail, OK, yes. Okay, so we're going to go, we finished the Ten Commandments. We're now on to uh, verse 19 of that section, verse 5, 19. And another one of our very literate uh, members of the community, Gail, is going to be the next Aliyah. And so it's on page, um, in the Red Book, 1021, in the uh, Hertz Commentary, 768. All right. The Et Ha'ele. Uh, I already I got the book here. Uh, I just, uh, hmm. huh? No, it is. Look, it's, it's on it's on my it, 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 it. Which one is this one? No, twenty five to twenty nine. So it's uh, it's a the link of Rasa 29, now page 29, add uh, a hat. I got something up here. Not you, but somebody did. Uh, it's a little bit. It's a little bit. Amen. <laughs> בהר מתוך האש, הענן בהר אפל, קול גדול ולא יצף, ויכתבם על שנאל לוחות אבנים, ויתנם אליי, ויהי כשומכם את הקול מתוך החושך, וההר בוער באש, ותקרבון אליי קול. ראשי שפניכם וזקניכם, מה תאמרו, הן ערנו, אדוני אלוהינו, את כבודו ואת גודלו ואת קולו, שמענו מתוך האש היום הזה, ראינו כי ידבר אלוהים את האדם וחי. Okay. Amen. It's a uh, it's like before this of your Shema. So. Mm -hmm. oh, meanwhile, I'll, I'll, I'll do the translation. Okay. Um, so again, now it gets a little less exciting, but Moses continues and describes the experience of being there at Mount Sinai and says, um, Lord spoke these words no more to the whole congregation with a mighty voice out of the fire and the dense clouds inscribed them in two tablets of stones, which you gave to me when you heard the voice out of the darkness. Uh, and so on and so forth. They were upset. They were worried. They said, the Lord has just shown us his majestic presence. Let us not die for this fearsome fire will consume us. Um, and the Lord heard the plea that you made to me and said, I have heard the plea. May they always be of such minds, revere me and follow all my commandments. Um, uh, and then he ends on verse 29. Be careful then to do as Adonai has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or the left 
Follow only the path that Adonai has enjoined upon you so you may thrive and you may, and may go well with you. And again, here I, I will just add these, these thoughts that, uh, you know, this is a generation now that is on their own way out, just like Moses is. And uh, there's a passage a little later that says, uh, this wasn't only given to you, but to your children, to the, the water bearer, to uh, everybody, you know, those who are not born yet. Uh, so uh, he's reminding them of the commitment and the rest I'll leave to Simon in his talk. So we're gonna go to, ver uh, to chapter six, chapter six on page 1023, in the um, in the red book in Eitz Chaim and page seven sixty nine, beginning of chapter six in the uh, Hertz, the Zot Hamitzvah, and we call Stuart. Yamod Zaman Mayer Bar Melchayel. Yeah, you do a reading from here up to the Shema. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Baruch Hu Et Adonai Baruch. Baruch Adonai Baruch Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Baruch Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Atah Adonai Elokeinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bafar Banu Mikol Hanim Venatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Atah Adonai Nochein Atorah. Amen. Amen. וזאת המצווה, החוקים והמשפטים, אשר ציווה אדוני אלוהיכם ללמד אתכם לעשות בארץ אשר אתם עוברים שמה לרשתה. למען תירא את אדוני אלוהיך לשמור את כל חוקותיו ומצוותיו אשר אנוכי מצוויך אתה ובנך ובן בנך כל ימי חייך ולמען יאריכון ימיך ושמעת ישראל ושמרת לעשות אשר ייטב לך ואשר תרבון מאוד כאשר ידיבר אדוני אלוהי אבותיך לך ארץ זבת חלב ודש. I almost feel like singing Simon Tov and Mazel Tov to you, Stuart. He had to relearn the blessings after all these years. Um, the translation, more or less, and this is the instruction, the laws and the rules. No, Stu, you stay up. You stay up for, for the next one, for, for Ben. Um, the laws and instructions that Adonai commanded me to impart to you to be observed so that your children and your children's children may revere Adonai, your God, and all of, as long as you live, obey Israel willingly and faithfully. And by the way, the word obey there is, is the word Shema. We're going to hear it in a minute. Shema uh, does not mean, um, today we say hero Israel. It means obey. Listen, did you listen? Did you listen to me? Right? So, so the next section, which is going to be um, Ben's, is the well-known prayer, which you heard earlier, of the so-called hero Israel, the Shema, and it's verse that it follows it, you should love God with all your heart and soul. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, uh, I'm fond of saying anyone who loves, say they love God and doesn't love their neighbor is a hypocrite and uh, doesn't realize what it really means. Um, another interpretation of the, the Shema is that God is not just one, but God is all, that unity, that no whatever name you give to God, it is that, that is your essence or your understanding of God. So now we call up Ben. All right. And we're going to be on verse, uh, our page um, 1024 in the red book. It's chapter it's six, verse four. And 
769 in the blue book. All right. Amen. Amen. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ve'ahavta Et Adonai Eloheinu Bechol levavecha Ubechol nafshecha Ubechol meodecha Ve'hayu הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו אמת את תורתו את תורת אמת תורת אמת תורת אמת וחיי עולם אתה בתוכנו Amen. Now you may have heard either Jeff or me say the word Ya'amod or Ta'amod. May they please rise, not you, the, the person. So that's the call. So here we go. Ya'amod, Ya'amod, Ya'amod. Find my notes here. <laughs> Shimon Nathan ben Zalman Meir, Elisheva Maftir, Bal Mitzvah Chazak. It's like an opera, as I said. Okay, so. What the Mishimah? We got to go. No, he goes all the way to the end, to the Maftir. So there's a, it's a, a few verses. It's a, the Yanatha. He can find it. See if you can find a kid. Ah, you find a kid and then back up. Yeah, I got it. If you want, I can't just get close to it. He knows who it is. No, we bring it to him. Okay, um, the special uh, honor of this last Aliyah is not in the section we read. It comes to the very end of the, the section of the Parsha, and it's on page uh, 1031 in the Red Book, chapter 7, verse 9. And in the blue book, it is uh, page 775. Go! Amen. Ubishalem, the son of Elpanav, the Havito, oh, no, 
ושיבתו את המצוות, ואת החוקים ואת המשפטים, אשר נוהים את צווחה, חי גאום לעשותם. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלא העולם, אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת, וחיי עולם נתן בתוכנו, ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. He's on time, we're a little late. <laughs> get a piece of candy, everybody get a piece of candy, and sing with me, and it's in the booklet too. Uh, they're handing them out now. It was supposed to be earlier than this, but everybody wants this, their cue. Simon Tolton, Lazo Tolton, Lazo Tolton, Simon Tolton, Simon Tolton, Decorum here, harumph, harumph. Funky fresh, everyone. You did a good job. All right. So, of course, now they have, we have to pick up the candy. <laughs> Aviv, would you pick up all the candy? Ken? Oh, Yossi. All young children and all young at heart. And uh, young at heart. Yes. Uh, I, I hope this just continues to be a custom of the congregation. It's a lot of fun. And of course, it's like throwing rice at a wedding. Um, and now uh, there's one more important honor. We have to have a, a somebody come up to lift the Torah. And Jeff, you're going to explain who are they? Okay, so um, we have a very small, you know, group of teenagers. But every, so everyone, we just treasure them. So uh, Courtney and Jonathan moved here from Washington D.C. with their son Noah. And Noah is going. They're going back east to Washington for Noah's bar mitzvah. He's already 13 though. So technically he can lift the Torah. And so Noah and mom are gonna come up to that now. Um, and are there others? That's it, okay. Ya amod ha magbiya, ta amod ha golelet. And we rise uh, as the Torah is lifted. And that little verse is at the bottom. Let's see. The bottom of page 252, that's 370 uh, in the home version. So please rise as Noah, with all his strength, lifts the Torah and we uh, kind of point to it. We don't point like this, we point with our pinky at the Torah. Okay. Push down, lifting up, turning around. Yeah, well, here, I can help him over here. Right. Just hold it, hold your side. There we go. Now everybody can see for three columns wide. This all types of Torah, Asher Samoshe, Lifne Bene Yisrael, Alti Adonai, Beyan Moshe. This is the Torah. It Moses placed before the people of Israel through God's word by the hand of Moses. And then he sits down, you can be seated, and uh, a mom will uh, have the honor of tying the Torah up. Incidentally, as, as, uh, as Jeff said earlier, this Torah is very old, and all Torah scrolls have this in common. They're all made of parchment. It can be any kind of a kosher animal, cow, goat, sheep, um, but not paper. And the same person who does that also will write the little scrolls, the little tiny scrolls that go inside the amulets on the door, the mezuzah. 
And so that person is uh, very trained uh, to do this kind of writing. Um, while that's happening, we're, we're continuing with the Haftarah, the uh, reading from the prophets, which Simon is gonna do. He's still, he's still up in effect. Um, Simon, it's your choice. You can do it from there or from here, um, whatever is easier. Um, as I said, I lost my place. As I said a moment ago, it is from the book of Isaiah. It's a beautiful verse. It says, um, comfort my people, says God. Um, and it's the first of seven of these Sabbaths. By the way, good job, Noah. And mom, thank you very much. So then we place the Torah back there so she can be honored, but uh, you don't have to sit and hold it the whole time. Um, so it's on page 1033 in the red book. And it usually comes right after the Torah portion. You can find it. And this is for all you guys to go for future. Um, in future, maybe we'll have the whole thing printed in the booklets. But if I did that, I'd have to, then we'd have to collect them because they become holy texts. Um, in the Hertz commentary, that's the blue one, the Haftarah is on page, Akev, page 776. So it says basically, comfort my people, says God, um, for Jerusalem has done all of the, her uh, repentance. And this is Isaiah writing years after, or, or maybe not Isaiah, maybe somebody imitating Isaiah, but saying, you know what, you've suffered long enough. And it's sort of like, as I said in my sermon a couple of weeks ago, before somebody does something that's a mistake that it's going to hurt them, you know, driving too fast, not eating well, you're warning them, warning them, warning them. The prophets did that. But after the tragedy strikes, they're in the hospital bed or they're in jail. You don't come up to them and say, see, I told you so. You comfort them. You hold their hand. You say, it'll be okay. So God, the next seven Sabbaths up until high holidays are these Sabbaths of comfort. And so um, you're going to hear Simon's beautiful voice singing this, this blessing, this Haftarah. Go. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Min Viihim Tovim Ratsa V'Divrehem Hanemarim Be'emet Baruch atah Adonai Havoher Bator Ha Uvoshe Avdo Uyishrael Amo Nahamu <laughs> Ki laka mia ha da donai ki faim bo hol ha to te ha ko ho kore ha mi ba har ha nu te ha donai ya shru ba arva mesila ha le lo he nu ko ge yena se bo hol ha ve giva ish pa ha ha nu. The <laughs> Kohabasar Hatsir Yavesh Hatsir Naverti Hit Udvalo Hedu Yakum Olam 
Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Sukkol ha'olamim, Tzadik v'chol ha'dorot, Ha'el ha'neeman, Ha'omer v'oseh, Ha'mdaber u'kayim, Shechol dvarav, Emet v'atzedek, Al ha'dorah, Ve'al ha'vodah, Ve'al ha'mbi'im, Ve'al yom ha'shabat ha'zeh, Shenatatad l'anu, Adonai Eloheinu, Litusha v'linuha, Lehavod u'tiparet. Al ha'kol Adonai Eloheinu, Anavnu modim la, U'mavarchim ota, Yitbarach shimha, U'fiho hai tamid, Ve'olam v'ed. Baruch atah Adonai, Mikadesh ha-shabbat. Another one, Simon Tov, the Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, the Simon Tov, Simon Tov, the Mazel Tov, the Mazel Tov, Simon Tov, Ay 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 Ay
Give your full attention to this special person. Take Hi. it slow, take it slow. Uh, I'm glad to see everyone here. Uh, as we all know pretty well by now, this service has been in the making for about three years. And I'm coming out of it a lot different than I was when I started. Uh, I'm really happy to be standing here. And without further ado, let's get started. As you've heard, the Torah portion that I read is called Be'et Hanan in English, and I pleaded. And it comes from Deuteronomy or Devarim in Hebrew. Deuteronomy, the fifth book of Torah, is largely a retelling of history. In this specific area of the book, Moses, now having grown old, recalls events of the past. Chapters four through 11 recall the events that happened at Mount Sinai with the giving of the commandments. Moses implores the people to follow the law and teach to their children. Warnings are also given about praising other idols and gods. The Shema Yisrael, the definitive statement of Jewish identity, is also found in this Parsha. My Maftir was from chapter 7, verses 9 through 11. This section can be translated as follows. Know, therefore, that only the Lord your God is God the steadfast God who keeps his covenant faithfully to the thousandth generation of those who love him and keep his commandments, but who, but who instantly requites those who reject him, never slow with those who reject them, requiting them instantly. Therefore, observe faithfully the instruction, the law and the rules with which I charge you today. A retelling of it in more modern language might go as follows. God keeps the given covenant, or God keeps the covenants given throughout all generations since the inception of the given covenants to the people that follow and keep the commandments. God reprimands or requites those who reject the commandments swiftly. So basically, follow the commandments to the best of your ability. There's a lot of information presented in my parsha. It, However, I wanted to focus on one word found in it as a baseline for the speech. Covenant, or in Hebrew, the word brit. Covenants have been found throughout the ages in many, many, many places. So it makes sense for at least a few passages to be found in a book that is a telling of the history of our people. So what is a covenant? The standard dictionary definition is an agreement or contract. That's not far off from our perception of it in a theological and religious standpoint. However, the way it's viewed in religion, especially as it applies to this Parsha, differs in a few ways. For starters, in this viewpoint, a covenant is seen as a flexible two-way agreement between God and living creatures. Now, covenants largely take two forms. There are two that are seen most often, conditional and unconditional. Conditional or bilateral covenants require an exchange of some kind. Both parties involved have agreed to fulfill some kind of agreement for mutual benefit. If one party fails to fulfill their end of the agreement, uh, the other is no longer bound to it and the covenant becomes invalidated. Unconditional covenants, on the other hand, require no work from one party, requiring only one party to fulfill their end. Now, this kind of agreement can be disputed as to whether it meets the requirements of being a full covenant as it is a one-way exchange. Covenants or agreements akin to them have been observed since the beginning of humanity, both in religious and non-religious aspects. One of the fundamental aspects of Judaism lies in covenants with the observance of the covenants of David, Moses, and Abraham. Abraham had the covenant of the circumcision, giving him and his descendants the promised land in exchange for following tradition and keeping his descendants. The Mosaic Covenant stipulates that God would make the Israelites a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, so long as they followed the commandments, as is referenced to in my Parsha. The Davidic Covenant was an unconditional covenant that established the throne of David and his descendants. Now, yeah, I've been glad to be able to be up here on the Bema to move over this speech, but this isn't a standard Devar Torah. This is my bar mitzvah. So how does the Torah portion relate to me? And how do the ideas of covenants relate to my life? The idea of having and keeping agreements is something that most everybody has. Many people have expectations of others and themselves. And we make agreements. We form these covenants to keep up those expectations. 
whether these covenants are made with oneself, with another person, or with some kind of Howard power, let's call it God, the person who makes these agreements will try their best to fulfill them. I'm no different. I, like many, try my best to uphold the agreements and contracts that I make with others, column covenants if you'd like. I keep them close to me and strive to create a better place for those around me. These covenants are two reasons why I'm having a bar mitzvah. I keep the covenant for myself to keep my family's heritage alive and remember the traditions of being Jewish. I keep that covenant with them and with myself, which is part of why I'm glad to be here. Additionally, I keep another covenant with myself to be true to who I am. For everyone, that looks a little bit different. But in my case, it means having a bar mitzvah as compared to a bat mitzvah. For me, keeping that covenant means existing as I was meant to exist. A lot of y'all knew me differently three years ago than you do now. Now, coming into the world authentically as myself, as Simon Nikolai Wolf, is the covenant I keep with myself and with the world. There are people out there who want to see me as I was born, who want to deny that covenant that I keep with myself and the world surrounding me. However, that agreement, of course, is one of the most important things one can respect of others and themselves. Keeping and respecting an agreement of one's self-fulfillment and happiness is absolutely crucial, especially in today's world. A few years, or not a few years actually, it was just a couple of months ago. This year's been a long one. I wrote this allegorical story about my life so far. It's called The Painter. I learned I was to become a painter when I was young. Everyone had thought me to become an author. And so I let them think just that. A painter living and breathing and consuming as an author would. I felt detached when they fantasized of my endeavors of publishing my first novella. I grew saddened as they pondered my works, telling me that I was to be the next token of my time. A looming sense of wrongness permeated my mind as it wandered off into the land of abstract colors and geometric values. I couldn't disappoint them in my mind. But as the years wore on, so did their beliefs. I did not yet have the strength to tell them that I was a painter, nor would they have had the resolve to believe me. And thus the cycle continued. That is, until my first poem got published in a newspaper. Utter turmoil is the only way I could begin to describe the emotions flowing through me. But my peers were all ecstatic. This was the, be the beginning of an incredible career as a published author. Soon, I could become the top seller in my field. But I couldn't, no matter how much strength I had. I finally came clean. I told them that I had a deep passion for painting and that I could no longer pursue a career as an author. I showcased a broad and impressive portfolio that I had worked on while not writing. They hated it, so they shunned me. They told me that I was too inexperienced as an author to know whether or not I wanted to become a painter, disregarding my lifetime of disinterest in writing. They called me delusional for seeking solace in a studio of canvas and pigment rather than in an office in front of a typewriter. They said that no matter how I decided my life would go, I would always be an author in their eyes because that's how I was taught. But I never believed them. They tried to take away my brushes. They tried to take away my palettes. They wanted to burn down my studio and leave the ashes for me to discover. Maybe that would make me a true author. They couldn't take those brushes from me if they had wanted to. I held onto my studio as if it were my lifeline. I chained myself to the base of my easel, insisting that if they were to burn it down, they would burn me down as well. And it worked. Their protests of my newest works grew quieter until they were a whisper and then nothing at all. They didn't fully respect my newfound position as a visual artist, but they would continue to learn with the medium as I grew into it. I am now flourishing because I'm a painter. I sit on my stool, painting with purpose to my life. I paint many things and I view each piece with a portion of my worldview. I have found happiness in my studio. And so I continue to thrive, painting my way into a better reality. Now, that'll conclude this portion of the speech. I, 
I really want to thank everyone in this room, uh, especially my family. Uh, thank you, Dad. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Mom, uh, for supporting me throughout this journey, uh, both in a bar mitzvah sense and in me becoming myself, because that's always a neat thing to do. Uh, I want to thank my friends for, you know, also supporting me. Uh, again, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't have done this without y'all. Uh, it's great to have the continued support of everyone in this congregation and everyone in this room. Uh, I also want to thank the rabbi uh, for teaching me and just letting me fill this role for letting me have a bar mitzvah. So thank y'all and well, enjoy what's left of the show. All right, now you don't get to come to, they don't put it there, there for now. You can, it's it sort of, this, this, oh yeah. You know, I, I've been a rabbi a long time and I've, I've had to say to people, no, you can't applaud, but you know what? It, it's worth it. Um, so I guess what if I stand like here? You know, you switch maybe, sides. Switch sides. You stand maybe there. Maybe I stand on the. You stand on the stage so they can see maybe, you at home. Still. Okay. Yeah. All I'm right. short. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we're going to be a little more relaxed, but I want us to be able to eat. And it's a little. We're running a little bit later than we thought because of everything. Um, this is like you know, what I, I want to call it like a talk show. Uh, you know, Stephen Colbert, Johnny Carson. I get to talk to him with you listening. Uh, more or less. New podcast uh, just dropped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not going to get a word in edgewise with you now. <laughs> so, um, as I said last night, of all the places that I would end up after all my years in the rabbinate, I'm not that old, but, you know, 30, 35 years, um, I've worked with uh, inmates in prisons and people in hospices and uh, many, many, uh, many of my B'nai Mitzvah kids now are grown with their own families. I'm that old. And um, it's really, truly been an honor to work with you. And I don't just say that, you know, just because uh, we sat in my office, we sat on the phone, we did things on, on computers. Sometimes the computers didn't cooperate. And I've really had a, just a tremendous time getting to know you. Heck yeah. And yeah, heck yeah. And, and um, you know, I feel, you know, I am an older guy but I feel great faith in you as the youth of today. Um, and uh, as most of you know, this guy's brilliant. He's really brilliant. He could be a painter and an author and a scientist. He could do just about anything he wants to do. I wanted to, to ask him to play the cello, um, but he may hopefully play cello for the Kol Nidre service. Uh, talented, brilliant, uh, empathetic, all the words you can use. Many of you know him better than I do. Um, and there are people in the world, as he alluded to, who would like to see him go back in the closet or deny him uh, kids of his sort medical care. Um, I have not met that many people of his age going through this transition. Um, and I'm very proud to know you. You represent yourself and your community, both communities, right? The, the, the Jewish and the LBGTQ very well. And like I said, I, I, I've done many bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, and this is a glimpse of the leadership he will show when he gets to college, when he has a profession, whatever that will be. Um, and, uh, you know, the only thing I can say is, may you become everything that you said you wanted to become. I had a prayer here, um, formally, that I was going to do earlier. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, Bless Shimon, uh, who has risen today for the, uh, that's his Hebrew name, Shimon, who for the honor of the omnipresent, for the honor of Torah and mitzvah, may God's presence fill his life and days to come as God's sustenance has been with him since the day of his birth. May he grow in health and body and spirit, and wisdom and graciousness, humility and love for others and in love of Torah. May he find favor and distinction in the eyes of God and his fellow human beings. And let us all say amen. amen. But I'm not quite finished. Oh, no. um, uh, here is your certificate, um, which I signed and was signed by uh, both Phyllis and Carol, representing the congregation. Uh, Shimon Nikolai Wolf was called to the Torah as a bar mitzvah 
on this parshat of Va'et Hanan um, in the presence of his family and community at Mount Sinai congregation. And the, the verse that they chose on this certificate comes from the Talmud. It says, the rest is commentary, now go and study. You're Darn. not finished. You're not finished, yes. Um, so it's suitable for framing. And uh, the other thing I like to do at uh, this moment with kids is, or anybody, is to talk about your name a little bit. You chose the name, take, keep it there, whatever, you give it to your mom. You, you chose the, no, say, say, no, but just <laughs> later, later. You chose the name Shimon. You chose the name Simon. Um, and then we were searching for a middle name uh, in the Hebrew that would match with Nikolai, and we came up with Natan. So Shimon, that's one of the tribes. Where is he? Uh, right up top there, left. on top left. Um, although he wasn't uh, the model, you know, among all of them, uh, Judah was the one that everybody remembered. But Shema, we said Shema, hero Israel. Shimon means he who others listens to, or he who listens to others, or he who follows, or he who has, has, is obedient to his own, you, you march by the beat of your own drum, so to speak. And Natan is a, both on one side a giver or a gift from God. So you're a gift from God who, who listens, who hears, and whom others pay attention to. Um, so I chose a song. If you want to take now look on the inside of the booklet. I've wanted to sing this song for a while to, uh, to a young person. It was written in the ancient 70s by, <laughs> right, by a woman named um, Margie Adam. I think she's still with us. And uh, I thought of you, and this song came back to me. It's called The Unicorn Song or The Best Friend Song. Oh, you're going to, okay, that's fine. When I was growing up, my best friend was a unicorn. The others smiled at me and called me crazy. But I was not upset by knowing I did not conform. I always thought their seeing must be hazy. The unicorn and I would while away the hours playing, dancing, and romancing in the wild flowers. Here's the chorus, and we'd sing, sing is believing in the things you see. Loving is believing in the ones you love. I can't, I can't do it without crying. When I was 17, my best friend was the Northern Star. The others asked, why was I always dreaming? But I did not reply. I found my thoughts were very far away from daily hurts and fears and scheming. The Northern Star and I would share our dreams together. Laughing, sighing, sometimes crying through all kinds of weather. And we'd sing chorus. Seeing is believing in the things you see. Loving is believing in the ones you love. And now that I am grown, my best friend lives inside of me. The others smile at me and call me. But I am not upset by no uh, so long ago I found the key. I've always known their seeing must be hazy. My friend inside and I will while away the hours, playing, dancing, and romancing in the wild flowers. I gotta hear you, and we'll sing. Seeing is believing. <laughs> In the things you see, loving is believing in the ones you love. Seeing is believing in the things you see, loving is believing in the ones you love. Loving is believing in the ones you love. 
So love is love and humans are humans. And now my pleasure to call up, I think one and two uh, in order. Uh, first, uh, Carol Fisher, Dr. Fisher, We've got two doctors in the house. Dr. Fisher uh, representing the sisterhood and the board and Dr. Jason Bloomberg representing the endowment, the endowment fund. Okay. And, and we're almost finished, folks. We got a couple more songs and uh, the cottage prairie. You got to come back up though, because you're going to be honored, showered with Darn. gifts. Shower the people you love with love. Love y'all. Take that part away. Yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. It's the honor of uh, sisterhood uh, to present you with a little present. Each uh, bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, usually the women and the men of the synagogue that help with celebrations present a gift. And traditionally it's been a Tanakh, which is a Bible. Um, but we had uh, he several heated discussions as what would be appropriate for you. And what we decided was that we would like to give a Pesach set to you from the gift shop. And the reason we decided to change that gift was Pesach is celebrating uh, uh, getting out of Egypt and going to Israel. And um, it represents freedom. And we felt that that celebration um, was a support and meant more to us to say, we support you in the freedom to be yourself in the future. And uh, so we decided to change the gift. And at some point, we want you to pick out something from the gift shop. Heck yeah, thank and you. That's the best. <laughs> All right. Hi. <laughs> it, it's my honor and privilege to be here, uh, not just as a congregant, not just as a Jew in this community, but also representing the Mount Sinai Endowment. Our, our, the president of the endowment wasn't able to be here today. The endowment, for those of you who don't know, is a fund to build um, material sustainability in our community so that whether our congregation grows or shrinks in numbers, we hope to never end up like other small congregations in the United States. We never want to have to choose between, do we have a building or can we have a rabbi? We've worked very hard for more than a century to have both. If you look around, you'll see some chairs that have little plates on them that look kind of like this. They are either in honor or memory of people uh, who are cherished by members of this congregation, wanted to be remembered by members of this congregation, or have, through their efforts, been an, an integral part of our community that has helped us to be here today, La Dorvador, generation to generation. You are a part of that. How funky. <laughs> and part of it, this is the first time we've done this for any B'nai Mitzvah. Uh, so this is another first for you. The endowment board authorized that uh, a chair should be sponsored in your honor. And part of it's been underwritten. And the other part comes from donations from people in the community, not made on Shabbos, by the way. <laughs> but anyone who wants to contribute to that is invited to do so. Let me read for those who are here and those afar what it says. And you're going to have to pick out the chair where this goes. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and you don't have to do that today. Sponsorship of this seat through a generous donation to the Mount Sinai Endowment in honor of Simon Nikolai Wolf helps build sustainability for our community. Sustainability for our community is not just the material. It is people showing up and participating. There's no point having a building if we don't have people involved. And all Jews should be welcome here, including those like yourself. Thank you for being yourself. 
Heck yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, all right, you got all these goodies. Um, we're now going to sing the Alenu, the uh, closing prayer of the service. And then we're gonna go eat. Um, you wanna stay up or you wanna go sit down with your family? <laughs> okay. Huh? Is it sit or stay? I sit. sit, okay. Okay. I had it marked. The Alenu is a, a prayer from the Middle Ages that was added later to kind of put a cap on everything that we've said. Um, it is a, a way of saying, uh, we acknowledge God's presence in our lives and um, thank God for making us uh, one of the messengers of the world for peace and holiness. Page 283 in the prayer book here, 283, or at home, 586. And it's customary to rise. And we're going to do the second paragraph at the bottom of the page. Um, I'm going to do it in English a little bit too. Let us praise the sovereign of the universe and proclaim the greatness of the creator has, who has made us among all the other families of the earth, giving us a destiny unique among the nations. We bend the knee and bow, acknowledging the Supreme Sovereign, the Holy One of Blessing. And on, I'm gonna read a little bit from the page afterwards. Let the time not be distant, O God, page 285, when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give way to integrity and goodness, when superstition shall no longer enslave the mind nor idolatry blind the eye, O may all created in your image become one in spirit and one in friendship, forever united in your service. Then shall your realm be established on earth and the word of your prophet fulfilled, Adonai will reign forever and ever. Aleinu l'shabayah l'adon hakol l'atev kedula l'yoseb reshit shelo asanu p'goyeh ha'avrasol v'lo hosananu p'mishpechot ha'adama uh, then we to skip that. Okay. Go to page two eighty seven. Benemor, the Haya Adonai, the Melech al Kol Haaret, Bayom Hahu, Bayom Hahu, Ye Adonai Echad, Ushimo, Ushimo, Ushimo Echad. You may be seated, and the final prayer is. Uh, as I said earlier, the, the mourner's prayer uh, in which we remember all those who've crossed over. Um, in particular today, we want to remember Marv Wolf, um, the grandfather, the father, the, the beloved husband of this family. Um, and Jeff, if you want to do it or shall I? I guess I'll just, Jeff's, so, yeah, okay, I got it. Is it the ones here? Um, at this time, it's also customary to remember those who, the anniversaries are called yard site of these people. Uh, in this community, you look at all the plates in the back, uh, as, uh, as Jason was saying, it's, it's been here a long time. Uh, so, uh, you know, and our, those of you from Cheyenne know where the cemetery is, all these names of all these people, veterans and whatever. So we have a lot of names uh, that we have, not a lot that I'm gonna read today, but the anniversary of Charles Montross, William, Wilma Wagman, Gussie Weinstein, Joseph Ambush, Dr. Lewis Hyman Foreman, Max Gelber, Martin Bernstein, Anna Quiat, Jean Bernstein, Martin Schoenberger, Ida Bob, and Anna Leah Kaminsky. And where did it go? Oh, it's over here. Yeah. And more recently, in this past year, we just did the unveiling for uh, Billy Novick a few weeks ago. Uh, the past year, we also lost Marion Marilyn Vissenberg, Roz Kaufman, Pat Wolf, who is uh, Alan's uh, wife, uh, Don Donald Falk, Dr. Charles Kukel, Millie Goldhammer, Marv Goldhammer, and Donna Marie Thornell, and also Susan Fisher. Um, 
And um, if there are any others who would like to be you add uh, here, doesn't have to be a Jewish person. Anybody else is a mourner. Okay, and online, Sherry, Georgia. Okay, um, I suppose I should mention, uh, you know, this, this is an interesting time. Uh, my father's own yard site was last week. Um, even though she wasn't part of the Jewish community, formally speaking, everybody's found out that Olivia Newton-John had a Jewish grandfather. Uh, we got them all over the place, folks. <laughs> Um, and we mourn also for the, the people who've died of COVID uh, and the people in the Ukraine. Anybody, do you guys have people from Hawaii you want to mention? Okay. No one, did you have a hand up? No. Oh, okay. So mourners and all who wish to may rise on um, page uh, 294 or 598 and the home version. Um, and, or if not, just say amen as these verses read. This, this is how we read. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shamei rabba. Amen. V'yalma v'yvarach yirutei v'yamlif malchutei v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei d'chro v'yit Yisrael v'agala v'yizman kariv v'yimru. Amen. Yehei shmei rabba m'varach le'olam olalmei almaya. It parah vi ishtabach, vi paar vi toman vi nase, vi tadar vi tale vi talal, shemed kucha brihu, le elam in kolbirhata vishirata, tushpirhata venechemata, la amiran be alma vi imru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, vi chayim alenu vi alko israel, vi imru, amen. O se shalom bim roma. Uya ase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'al kol Yeshvei Tebel v'imru amen. Thank you all for your your patience and the heat and it's cooler in the other room. Phyllis has a few announcements and um, then we're all gonna. I, I guess Jeff overruled me. We're gonna do the blessing on the wine in here and then go in the other room. Go ahead. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all of our announcements. I just want to thank you all for being here. Please join us um, in the social hall for the reception. Thank you. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. The rest we all get online. Um, I'm going to exercise a little rabbinic authority, and uh, we would normally end the service with Adon Olam, uh, but I'm going to do one more English song uh, inside the booklet. This is again by that same author, that same songwriter I mentioned, Debbie Friedman. Um, when she first wrote it, she called it Andy's Bar Mitzvah Song, whoever Andy was. He must be 60 by now. But um, it's special. I sang it at um, uh, also at Aviv's, uh, I'm sorry, at uh, Talia's baby naming. Um, so it's called The World of Your Dreams. May your eyes shine with the light of Torah And your face be brilliant as the brightness of the sky Shabbat Shalom, hey! Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shabbat Shalom.
Shabbat, 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 Shalom. Okay, Jeff, why don't you come up and you're going to... I know, he, 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 he overruled me. I overruled him. So he overruled me. Okay, you come back up. The whole family, the whole family. Come on up. Yep. There's nothing special. Well, there's something very special about the Bima, but by doing it up here, we all get to hang out together. And so it's very short. The blessing on the wine, by the way, those of you know, in Jewish tradition, the wine is not holy. The moment is holy or the grape juice in some cases. So uh, whenever we have a, a wedding, a bris, a bar mitzvah, any joyous occasion, a holiday, of course, we do the blessing on the wine. Um, not at a funeral, of course. And then the bread is a symbol of all of us eating together like breaking bread, which we will in a moment. All right. Um, so I, I wish we poured it, but you didn't. So here we go. Um, and uh, maybe we'll get you a, your own kiddish cup someday. No, I will just be person. Go ahead. Amen. That's real wine, kiddo. Yeah, all right. Don't drive home. Okay. And I hope my tongue will be tired. Yes. All right. And maybe the whole family is coming. Since you all live in the same house. You can touch the bread together, break bread for all of us on behalf of all of us. Mazel tov to all of you. I didn't mean to start. I didn't mean to start that, but okay. Well, <laughs>